Hi, welcome to Brian Sews. Today we're going to be talking about color points. There was a really great uh, blog posting on Off the Cuff blog, and she specializes in sewing men's shirts, and she divulged probably what I would consider to be the hottest sewing tip I've seen online for a very long time. So what I've got is I've got one collar, I've got two, actually two collars cut here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the difference between how I used to do it and how I'm doing it now with Claire's technique. And as she states, it's not actually her technique, it's just the technique she learned in tailoring. So, what we do is we start right sides together, and this is this is just the technique I've always used to sew colors, and it may or may not be right. So what we do is we just sew one side here. I, oops, sorry about that. I usually will do this in a three part, three parts. I'll do the one side there. Then I will do the other side, lining up my edges. This technique is especially useful when your under collar is smaller than your upper collar, and the reason why you would have a smaller under collar is so it pulls the edges under. Sorry, my vocabulary is a little short this morning. All right, so we have the two edges sewn, the two sides. Now I'm just going to sew this top part here. I've seen so many different techniques for doing this, from people sewing a little instead of going right into the point, just sewing the three stitches across the point. I've, I've seen people who have elaborate trimming methods that supposedly works, but this is the first technique I've seen that actually does work, at least for me. Um, you'll notice that we're sewing really slowly here. This is not because I am just sewing slowly for your benefit, it's because we're using a treadle sewing machine, and that is about as fast as I go. There we go. So, you can see here, sewn into the corner, and what I would normally do is I would normally cut this, and then I would also come in here, and I'd trim this away, I would do the other side, trim that away, do the same thing on this side. Seems like you could never trim enough fabric from the point to get it pointy. So then what I would do is I would take it like this, sometimes I'd stick like the scissor in there and try to turn it on the scissor. Alright, whatever, so pull, pop this out. And usually it's a bit of a rolling technique here. And then, oh, it's kind of square, so I'm going to stick my scissor back in there. I'm sure you've all done this. Poke at it some more with the scissor. Okay. And that, pretty good on that side. Let's do this other side here. This is where if your stitches aren't small enough, you'll roll the point right out. Uh, poke it again. There we go. So generally speaking, this is a color that I would be pretty happy with. That's pointy, but you see what you've got going on here is there's a little bit of a, a ball here at the tip. It's not it's not exactly the perfect point. I've gotten pretty good at that technique, so it's actually not so bad. And, you know, most people are perfectly satisfied with that. This side, you can see, it's not exactly pointy. I'm afraid if I poked at it more, it would poke right through. So that is the technique that I would normally use. Now, Claire's technique has changed my life. I've had dreams about this already. <clears throat> so... We start with the same collar, we put it right sides together, you know how this works. 
Alright, it stays together. Now, instead of... It doesn't really matter, actually. No, it does matter. Instead of sewing the, the top... Excuse me. Instead of sewing the sides first... That's right. I'm going to sew the top first. So here we go. Excuse me, this is the first, I think this is the first sewing video I've done in a really long time. So, we'll start going here. Try to go as fast as I can. Uh... <laughs> it definitely works out your leg. So, what we've done is we've sewn just this long side of the color. Now we're going to open it up like this, get that out of there. Now I need a color thread that you're going to be able to see clearly. Let's see if you can actually see this one here. Yeah, that's good enough. So I'm going to cut a length of this red thread and I'm putting the ends together that creates a loop the loop is here on my right hand I lay this thread with its loop and the loop is sticking oh, there's black thread there too get that out of the way so your loop is out here your tail ends are on the left loops on the right now what you want to do is you want to tuck that thread right in to where the two pieces of fabric join. Once it's tucked in, you flip that over. Now I'm going to sew the side here. And before I get all the way to the top, I'm just going to kind of pull, get these black threads out of the way. Kind of pull the, just want to make sure that it's all the way into the corner as much as possible. And I'm going to shorten my stitch length as Claire suggested as I come into the corner. Okay. So, as I cut my threads, I'm being very careful to swing my looped thread, or in this case they're red, out of the way. Now I need to trim the fabric. So you can kind of just see, good thing I've got this backlighting, the red thread comes right here and right into the corner. So as I trim, I'm going to trim it right like that. And that's all the trimming I'm going to do. So let's do the other side. See if we can repeat this process. I'm going to go ahead and cut off these black thread tails. They're not doing us any favors right now. So open this up again. Get a length of red thread. Okay. Put my tails together, create the loop, loops in my right hand, tuck the threads into where the fabric joins and fold it over. All right. Increase my stitch length again. Before I get there, I'm just going to do a little extra tuck to be sure they're right at the top. Shorten my stitch, oops, shorten my stitch length. Most techniques uh, suggest you shorten your stitch length near a color point. It just helps when you're turning it in no matter what technique you use, so you don't uh, blow it out, as I say. No one likes blown out color points. So here's the red loop. It's going right in to where you see that intersection of seams. We're going to trim off just the corner. All right. So now, we'll turn it. You can probably see where this is going. I 
it's kind of this, it's honestly, it's kind of the same technique, just with the addition of this red thread. You have to use red thread. If it doesn't, if it's not red, it won't work. I'm kidding. So now we have this thread. <laughs> so that one I'm still practicing. That one didn't work. What happens is, is if your stitches don't catch the thread when you're sewing on top of the red thread, I'm actually going to use a little scissor to poke this one. Just give it a little head start. And then give it a nice tug. And then once you're sure you've pulled out the point sufficiently, you take one of the threads. Oops, see if you can separate them. Separate your threads and you should be able to just pull it right out. So, this is my perfect color point. Alright, it's not exactly perfect, but the turning it is much easier. And for something that takes all of... I, I don't even know if the technique even takes any more time than, than the normal way of sewing it. So let's see the difference between the two of these. So the one on the left is with the thread technique, the one on the right is just by turning it normally. And you can see there is a clear difference between the two of them. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.